Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you're doing well. I have some very big news to share with you all. We're seeing a lot of bullish news these days, a lot of institutions coming in. And a common question uh, folks may ask is, hey, why isn't the price moving with this bullish news? Well, you have to understand market cycles, what we talk about all the time. There's going to be points of overbought and oversold and co correction and consolidation phases. That's just how it is with markets, right? You have to understand market psychology. The, the charts tell the, the uh, human emotions and psyche. And sometimes after you've had a very strong bull run up, you need that correction phase uh, to, to, to kind of cool off a bit before we go further. So we're going to get into all of that. But some of the big items I want to cover with you guys is Bank of America has launched a crypto research team. We have NeoBank, a fintech firm that is jumping into crypto. We also have a hydroelectric plant that is only able to survive because they're mining Bitcoin. This is big because when you think about the thousands of mining plants, or I should say not mining plants, but energy companies, and, and um, whether it be nuclear or hydroelectric or whatever it may be, there's a lot of them and they would certainly want to do the same. Uh, we're also going to talk about an investment firm that has bought a significant amount of crypto. Uh, we also have another senator, another politician who has bought crypto. So we're going to go through all of that. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin, OK which has the lowest fees around. Why pay high fees? Use OKCoin OK to buy your crypto, link in the description. Please also sign up for my free weekly newsletter, All Crypto Insights and Knowledge, no spam. Uh, if you want to learn about the market and the updates, I will be sharing updates through my newsletter. Now, I want to let you guys know about some upcoming interviews that you might be interested in. I will be interviewing Alex Mashinsky next week, and that is definitely confirmed. I'm in the progress of confirming the following interviews. Chris Larson, co-founder of Ripple, Perry Ann Boring, founder and president of Chamber of Digital Commerce, and Ben Weiss of CoinFlip, which is a uh, crypto ATM company. So you don't want to miss these interviews, so make sure you have the notification bell enabled. Now, uh, here's some interesting data from Will Clemente, who does some on-chain analysis. Uh, he has a, a newsletter, by the way, you can sign up to as well. Well, as the price keeps going down and consolidating and moving sideways, it's we're seeing that the whales, the strong hands, are buying the dip, and the data doesn't lie. So there's a big divergence between price action and the fundamental investor activity right now, and it's growing stronger. So whales are buying. And here's an example. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you this here. Uh, in an SEC filing today, First Midwest Bank Trust Division, based in Joliet, Illinois, reported holding 29,498 shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust as of June 30th. Previously, it reported 7,693 shares at the end of March. They kept buying. See what's happening here, my friends. And I'm sure a lot of this was accumulated as the price corrected down from 64,000 Bitcoin, that is, right? Um, we are seeing a massive accumulation from the whales. And I hope you guys understand what is at play here. Smart money, they are not phased by this. And they're looking at the macro level charts, which I try to point you guys to here is the, uh, the stock to flow model. And I think this market cycle, and we're using Bitcoin as the benchmark here because Bitcoin moves the market, we're going to double peak like we did in 2013. Uh, in 2013, we had a strong run up and then a correction and then another huge run up in that same cycle. So now there could be months between these respective run ups. So you have to be patient. You have to look at the macro level charts. If you're looking, at, if you're a hodler and you're looking at hourly, daily, and <laughs> even uh, weekly charts, you're going to be disappointed because it's very volatile, right? Now, uh, let's move ahead here. Bank of America has launched a new markets research team dedicated to cryptocurrencies. Gee, I wonder why they're doing that. <laughs> Could it be the paradigm shift that's taking place, the new emerging asset class? 
And as the World Economic Forum uh, outlined it as the fourth industrial revolution. Many of you remember that document from Davos when uh, all the world leaders, they usually go to the World Economic Forum. So Bank of America, the Wall Street banking giant, has launched a new uh, research team dedicated to covering the cryptocurrency market. According to a report by Bloomberg News, the unit will be led by Alkesh Shah who joined the bank in 2013, according to a memo seen by Bloomberg. Here's a quote, cryptocurrencies and digital assets constitute one of the fastest growing emerging technology ecosystems. Candace Browning, head of global research of, uh, excuse me, global research for Bank of America, reportedly wrote in a memo, we are uniquely positioned to provide thought leadership due to our strong industry research analysis, market leading global payments platform and our blockchain expertise. Now, if you've been a subscriber to this channel over the years, we've followed Bank of America closely and they had filed for uh, a man, multiple crypto patents to do a variety of things. And some of those patents they won, some they did not, but they were moving in silence doing this. They weren't making huge headlines and we were uh, covering it on this channel. So I think Bank of America is going to make a bigger splash. I think that's the come because we saw JP Morgan, uh, Citibank and uh, BNY Mellon and some of these others have taken a position, but where is the other giant that is Bank of America? And I think, um, they've got something up their sleeve, especially what they've been doing over the years. And I think many of us know about the uh, Ripple partnership as well. And I think that was not made, you know, it, there wasn't a huge PR push because of the SEC lawsuit against Ripple and uh, in, in regards to XRP, but there's a huge partnership there. So here's another bank getting involved. Neobank Moniz, if I'm saying that right, is the latest fintech firm to explore crypto products. Um, London-based neobank Moniz is exploring offering new crypto products through its mobile mo money app, according to two people familiar with the matter. These sources said that Moniz had held talks with crypto exchanges over potential partnerships to help launch the new tools. Everybody is expanding. I think, I think you see a major land grab here, right? For you want to get as big of a share of the market, the biggest share of the pie here, so you can make money. And I think that's what everybody's trying to do. You're seeing mergers, acquisitions, uh, expansions, a lot of funding and raising of cash to do this. And uh, it's, it's very bullish, even when, and, and this is why you need to hang your hat on these facts, not just the price, because the price doesn't really tell the true story of what's being built. It will eventually, those things are gonna dovetail, but market cycles have to play out and these guys are building regardless of what the price is right now. So, uh, but exact time frame for such a move is unclear and a spokesperson for Moniz said, the firm has no immediate plans to launch a crypto product. Um, AKA they're working on it, but we're not gonna you know, reveal our plans or tell you an exact timeline because we don't want the competitors to uh, move ahead of us. So they're not going to give away everything. Uh, here's a quote. We've been speaking with almost all payment processors and neobanks. They are all at different stages. So you never know who's serious about adding crypto and who's just doing research, said one executive at a crypto firm. Now, I think read between the lines here, when you have the biggest of the biggest, your Bank of America's, your Goldman Sachs, your Morgan Stanley's, and these folks jumping in, game theory will su would suggest these other folks are going to jump in, especially the smaller ones, because they can probably move a bit faster and no one wants to get, get left behind. I use the analogy a lot. Look at what happened to Blockbuster. They did not adapt and innovate right to the internet, went out of business, bankrupt. And I think a lot of these companies recognize that and they're going to, they, whether they say they're bluffing or, you know, smoke and mirrors, no, nah, we're not doing anything, but secretly they're building something. We saw JP Morgan do this. They were building JPM coin while Jamie Dimon was saying Bitcoin's a scam, trash, right? So I think we all know how the game is played here. Now, check this out, guys. Um, Mechanical, ugh, Mechanical, excuse me, Mechanicville. Hydroelectric is the oldest renewable energy facility in the world that's still running, but it was nearly dismantled as, a, as it's difficult to maintain profitability. 
that recently changed and now profitable. Now it's profitable thanks to Bitcoin mining. Guys, uh, there was another report. I remember reporting on this months ago. There's a power plant not far from me up in New York, and they are using their excess energy to mine crypto. This, once again, game theory will suggest others will follow suit. This is going to be huge. And you have these companies that are going to use their excess um, energy to mine crypto, and it's going to help them to be profitable and, and really put them in the, in the black versus the red, right? Um, and this is getting covered by the Times Union here. Other power plants will follow. Nuclear, hydroelectric, whatever it may be, I think we're going to see a lot of them flocking to mining Bitcoin. And we've been seeing Bitcoin mining, uh, Bitcoin mining boom in the United States, especially in Texas. Uh, it's here to stay. While Bitcoin may not be the fastest, the most efficient, the most scalable, uh, its use case as digital goal and a hedge against inflation cannot be ignored. If you don't understand that, I highly recommend you research how gold and other precious metals have served as a hedge historically, and then you will get that use case. That's why you see big companies, corporates, and hedge funds, and all these folks are buying Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's not the only crypto they're buying. They're investing in altcoins as well, but Bitcoin is usually what they lead with. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of tribalism in the market, and people really uh, just maybe call out Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's flaws, but they're not calling out the pros of why it still exists, right? And what's happening. So uh, you really have to understand monetary policy. And I don't think a lot of people do, or they would understand Bitcoin and even gold's use case. Now, uh, once again, as I mentioned earlier, you're seeing a lot of fundraising. You're seeing a lot of money coming into the market. Welsh crypto insurer CoinCover lands $9.2 million Series A fundraise. So you have People, all kinds of like uh, infrastructure being built a around the crypto market as you have in the traditional markets. That's data analytics, research, white glove service, insurance, and insurance is a big part of what's going to help this market to grow. So the startup combines a technology platform with insurance protection underwritten by Lloyd's of London. In event of business or systems failure, customers are covered up to $1 million. I love it. This is so crucial. It's one of the pillars of what's going to help this market to grow. Insurance, assurance, protection, security are going to be so important, especially when you have the hedge funds and the big players coming in and the wealthy individuals. Uh, and, and this is bullish. You, you're seeing right before your eyes the building out of this new asset class, and it's going to be positioned the same way the traditional asset classes, stocks, and, and so on and so forth. Um, now, Jeremy Allaire, I'm a big fan of Jeremy Allaire. I interviewed him, I think it was a couple months ago. Let me see here, four months ago, actually. Um, so I'll put a link to that interview in the description of the video. Um, but obviously, Circle, um, they are the creator of the stablecoin USDC. And they are going to be going public via an SPAC merger. And Jeremy kind of shared a thread here on Twitter about it. I'll read through some of it. But uh, very big, my friends, you're seeing crypto companies going public. Well, obviously, we had Coinbase, which was the largest. And you're going to see Bitcoin miners going public. You're going to see possibly Ripple and many others. It's coming. Same way in the dot-com boom that we saw. Excuse me, that we saw these... Um, companies going public and just growing and the revenues there, it just gives the market more exposure. And I, I, I wish I could double dip. I wish I was an accredited investor to both buy the assets. Well, I can buy the assets already, but to invest in these companies as well, as well. So Jeremy says a separate thread on being a public company on and increasing public transparency around USDC. As we partner with major companies and financial institutions, and as people around the world interact with USDC, becoming a public company is a critical step in providing greater transparency as a firm. As part of our transformation from private to public company, that also creates an opportunity for Circle to also provide significantly more transparency about the business we are building around USDC and about the reserves that back USDC. So I'm not going to read through the whole thing here, but um, you guys can certainly check it out. But very happy for Jeremy and, and uh, Circle. And it's another 
step in the growth of this emerging market and and uh, and, and and you're going to see more companies go public um here finally we have another senator that has bought crypto senator pat toomey buys into grayscale's bitcoin and ethereum trust uh this was through his disclosures of um uh, his records i think you know these politicians they have to disclose these things very bullish guys he's a republican out of uh pennsylvania this is not about democrat or republican i'm just stating the facts here and it's it's bullish because why we need these people to help push the regulations to get things going. And in fact, there was some news about Elizabeth Warren um, giving the SEC uh, a deadline as to when they need to uh, provide crypto regulation. So Senator Warren warns of cryptocurrency risks, uh, presses SEC oversight Oh, excuse me, presses SEC on oversight authority. Now, I know she's been kind of negative on crypto, but uh, I think we've all been waiting for the SEC to get its act together. And that is one, a Bitcoin ETF, and two, stop the bullshit Ripple lawsuit, um, which I think they're going to try to go after other crypto companies. I still think Congress has to step in unless Gary Genster does the right thing here, but I don't know if he can go in there and shake up this this kind of mob that exists, uh, with the exception of Hester Purse, you know they're using that eighty year old Howie test and they're incentivized to get these settlement fees because that that is part of how they operate. So if you're incentivized to get money um, to operate to fund your operations, you're going to try to any way and anyhow to get uh, millions from these different companies, crypto or not, right? So you know we'll see what happens, but. Uh, at least, you know, the discussion's happening. And, and I think, I still do think Congress has to pass a law here to put the SEC in their right place. Uh, but guys, bullish news, especially this Bank of America news. Um, and let's keep an eye on them. I think they got something big prepared. Anyway, guys, what do you think about this news? I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Leave them in the comment section below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video. Be sure to subscribe. Don't forget about the interviews I got coming up. So make sure you got the notification bell enabled. Share my channel with your friends and family. Thank you guys. And I'll talk to you all later.